spread of rabies virus in Sarawak will be contained. Detailed investigation to be conducted into abusive teacher. Good afternoon, I'm Zalakar Ismail. Welcome to News on 2. Health Minister Datuk Sri Dr. S. Subramaniam has expressed confidence that the spread of the rabies virus in Sarawak can be contained. However, he cannot predict when the epidemic will end. Datuk Sri Dr. Subramaniam said currently large-scale operations are being carried out in Syrian Sarawak, the first district to be declared rabies infected and its borders. <laughs> Tapi proses ini kadang-kadang anjing pun boleh lari tau dari satu tempat ke satu tempat. So, itu yang kita takut. Adakah daripada Sirian dia lari ke bandar yang lain? Nah, perkara ini. So, tapi tapi veterinari memang mereka buat pemantauan yang kerap untuk memastikan bahawa ini boleh dikawal. To date, the rabies has claimed five lives in Syria, including four children. The latest victim, Tinding Lambang 52 from Kampung Ramun, Syria, died at around 10.45 p.m. Sunday at Sarawak General Hospital. The Education Ministry will conduct a detailed investigation into an alleged abuse of a student by a school teacher in a religious school in Kuching, Sarawak. Its minister, Datuk P. Kamalanathan, said it must first be determined whether an abuse had occurred before any action is taken. We need to make an investigation. There is a process where we call investigation needs to be done. Once the investigation is done, and if we find that the teacher is guilty as been accused of, then the Ministry of Education will not hesitate to take disciplinary action against the teacher. He said this during a briefing at the Asia-Pacific Regional Technical Capacity Development Workshop on Effective Planning of Education Sector for Achieving SDG for Education 2030 in Kuala Lumpur yesterday. In the alleged incident that happened last Tuesday, two Form 4 students of a religious school were disciplined for not completing their homework. The alleged punishment given by the teacher was said to involve an hour of doing sit-ups and squats, which had caused the student to suffer from torn thigh muscles, believed to have been a result of the extreme punishment. Former Road Transport Department's JPJ Deputy Director General Datuk Yusuf Ayub, who was fined for a traffic offence a week ago, claimed trial at the Putrajaya Magistrates Court today. The 58-year-old was recharged for the offence after Chief Justice Tan Sri Mat Rao Sharif said the case would be sent back to the court as he did not turn up for the hearing last Tuesday. Datuk Yusuf instead had sent his special officer to plead guilty on his behalf. He was charged for driving on the emergency lane in Lingkaran Putrajaya, Putrajaya at 6.27pm on October 7th last year. The act is in violation to Rule 53, Subsection 1 of Road Traffic Rules 1959, and it is an offence under Section 119, Subsection 1, Subsection C of the Road Transport Act 1987. Last Tuesday, he was fined 600 ringgit after his representative pleaded guilty and mitigated on his behalf. Prosecution was conducted by Deputy Public Prosecutor Izzat Fauzan, while Datuk Yusuf was represented by lawyer Datuk Baljit Singh Sidhu. The first group of 483 Malaysian pilgrims for this year's Hajj arrived at the Prince Muhammad bin Abdulaziz International Airport in Medina yesterday at about 2.30 p.m. Malaysian time. After clearing with immigration and the Muasasa or Saudi Hajj Affairs officials, they arrived at the Anwar al Madinah Movan Peak Hotel at about 6 p.m. Malaysian, Malaysian time. The Malaysian pilgrims were greeted at the hotel by Malaysian High Commissioner to Saudi Arabia, Dato Zainul Rahim Zainuddin, Malaysia Consulate Trade Commissioner in Jeddah, Khairul Anwar Abdul Halim, and Madinah Terminal Manager, Muhammad Zahir Hussein. Also present were the Malaysian Hajj Delegation Deputy Head, Nurin Anwar Shamsuddin, and Hajj Consul Muhammad Saimi Matsom. The pilgrims were overcome with emotions upon setting foot on the Holy Land. <laughs> Saya kata mimpi ke saya ni? Tak ingat pasal sudah lama nunggu, ala-ala tiba-tiba tahun ni saya dijemput bahasa untuk menunaikan pardu haji. Itulah tak tak sangka dalam hati tak tak tak, tak, tak tahu nak cakap macam mana. 
This year, a total of 30,200 Malaysian pilgrims will be performing the Hajj pilgrimage, which is the fifth pillar of Islam. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak, who bade farewell to the second batch of Malaysian Hajj pilgrims at the Klanijaya Tabung Haji complex yesterday, said the exemplary behaviour by Malaysian pilgrims was a contributing factor to this year's increased Hajj quota. Kita di Malaysia ni, tuan -tuan, dapat banyak Jangan fikir, semi datang ni yang pipih datang melayang, yang bulat datang bergolek. Tidak. Ini berlaku kerana the Premier also reminded Malaysian pilgrims to pray for Malaysia to remain safe and achieve many successes, including in the international arena. The second batch of Hajj pilgrims comprising of 420 people left for Medina at 9.30pm yesterday. A total of 112 flights will ferry 30,200 pilgrims to the Holy Land in this Hajj season, with the last outbound flight on August 26. The body of a man who was reported missing while fishing near Kampung Sungai Dua Alu Jungles was found floating in the waters of Kuala Kedah Kedah yesterday. Kuala Kedah Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency MMEA Director, Lieutenant Commander of Maritime Ahmad Kamal Muhammad Noor said that the body of Muhammad Naim Hassan, aged 21, was found at around 5.20 p.m. yesterday. The victim's body was found at a distance of 2.7 nautical miles from Kuala Kedah before being handed over to the police for further action to be taken. The body, which was found with no traces of injury, was then taken to Hospital Sultana Bahia HSB Alul Star for post-mortem. Muhammad Naim and a friend, Muhammad Nizar Sawa, aged 31, were believed to have set sail at 6.30 a.m. on a boat belonging to his father before it capsized. The victim's friend managed to save himself by clinging to the overturned boat before being discovered by some fishermen. Coming up next, IMF revised economic growth forecast to 4.8%. Taking into account the economic data and stable monetary policy in the country, the International Monetary Fund, or IMF, revised this year's economic growth forecast upwards from 4.5% to 4.8%. This was stated by IMF's Economic Counselor and Director of Research, Dr. Maurice Opsfeld. You know, we have uh, upgraded uh, Malaysia's uh, growth outlook to 4.8%. Uh, for, for this year, um, uh, you know, we see, um, um, uh, you know, a, a successful effort to um, um, uh, increase the sustainability of debt, which is on downward a downward path, and uh, you know, very very uh, steady hand in, in monetary policy uh, for Malaysia. Uh, you know, there are, if anything, upside risks to this forecast. So uh, we're, we're optimistic here in Malaysia. Dr. Opsfeld was speaking at a press conference presenting the World Economic Outlook. He said the IMF maintained its global economic forecast at 3.6% next year compared to 3.5% this year. The world financial body, however, revised growth prospects for the United States to 2.1% from 2.3% due to a weak performance in the first quarter of this year. The global Islamic finance industry is expected to maintain its sustainable growth during the second half of 2017. World Islamic Economic Forum Foundation WIF Chairman Tun Musa Hitam said the strong growth currently experienced by the Islamic financial industry is due to the surge of interest in Islamic finance shown by non-Muslim countries. So many countries are beginning to recognize the potential of it. And the interesting thing is that many countries which are not quite Muslim, that's been very polite, talked about Islamic finance. They want to open Islamic banking, they want to launch Islamic finance projects. He said this at a media briefing on the 13th WIF in Kuala Lumpur yesterday, which was also attended by Sarawak Deputy Chief Minister Dato Amar Awang Tengah Ali Hassan. The upcoming 13th WIF themed Disruptive Change, Impact and Challenges will be held at the Borneo Convention Centre in Kuching, Sarawak from November 21st to 23rd. 
The issue of water supply shortage in the Orang Asli village in Kampung Aipasi Kluang, Johor, will be solved with the construction of new tube wells by a group of researchers from University of Technology Malaysia, UTM. It is expected to benefit 30 households comprising of about 150 people in the village. The research is in collaboration with the Malaysia-Japan International Institute of Technology, UTM-MJIIT, Centre for Community Networking and Industry, CCIN, Department of Orang Asli Development, JAKOA, Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Rural and Regional Development. UTM Deputy Director for Disaster Preparedness and Prevention Centre, DPPC, Professor Dr. Muhammad Ali Muhammad Yuzir said that at the moment, the villagers rely on the water source of a tube well with a limited depth of 30 metres. Kami juga telah melakukan uh, apa tu uh, preliminary study untuk menentukan di manakah kawasan tapak yang sesuai untuk uh, dilakukan kerja pengurekan untuk menghasilkan air uh, daripada telaga cup sedalam 100 meter. The tube wells will be built in the area that has a lot of rock fractures with fracture networks that lead clean water to the Orang Asli settlement. 100,000 ringgit was allocated by the Ministry of Higher Education for the construction work of the tube wells. Jakowa and the Minister of Health had also agreed on a donation for the purchase of equipment such as pumps and new tube wells that channel water to the Orang Asli homes at a distance of about 150 meters. Masalah air dah 50 tahun dah. Lama ni. Uh, kita memang dah, dah lama minta tapi dapat-dapat tapi tak mencukupi. The construction of tube wells also involves volunteer researchers from all institutions in the project. Perak became the first state to implement the One Malaysia Customer Service of Civil Servants or OneServe in order to improve customer service system. Public Service Department Director General Datuk Sri Zainal Rahim Saman said the first phase will be implemented in the Perak Urban Transformation Center UTC and the Ipoh City Council MBI. He said the OneServe concept is an improvement in segregating each service to its own counter as opposed to various services handled by one counter. In UTC Pera, three agencies will be involved in the new concept, namely the Immigration Department, National Registration Department and the Road Transport Department. Ia memberikan satu fenomena baru di mana masa depan nanti untuk menjelang tahun 2020, malahan asal kita 2050 nanti, kita akan melihat bahawa sebenarnya OneServe ini ada di mana-mana. Datuk Sri Zainal Rahim was speaking after the One Malaysia Customer Service of Civil Servants once of walkabout at the Urban Transformation Centre, UTC. Commenting further, he said the second phase of OneServe will be implemented in Perlis and in Negeri Sembilan. He remains confident that OneServe will be fully implemented in all states within two years' time. Touch and Goes Neighborhood, a subsidiary of CMB Group Holdings Berhad, is embarking on a joint venture or JV with China's leading online payment platform Alipay to enable mobile wallet solutions in Malaysia, which analysts said will undoubtedly benefit Touch and Go. CIMB Investment Bank Berhad Group Asset Management and Investment CEO Effendi Shahul Hamid said under the joint venture, Touch and Go will have the exclusivity to develop the mobile wallet with Alipay in Malaysia, but Alipay is open to working with other banks for the e-payment ecosystem, including funding and acquiring merchants. Uh, we will be committing a necessary amount of capital uh, to launch uh, the services that we expect uh, to launch uh, in the next X amount of time. Um, we expect the teams to be working together uh, in a very JV format. Uh, the JV will have its own management and board uh, and will go about its duties uh, as need be. He was speaking yesterday after entering into the investment agreement with Alipay, a subsidiary of the world's leading digital financial services provider and financial services group to set up a JV entity to be incorporated in Malaysia. Touch and Go will be the majority shareholder and Alipay the minority shareholder in the JV to launch a new mobile platform for payments and other related financial services in Malaysia. Malaysia ready to take on the world as champions return home. Stay with us. Newly crowned world diving champion Cheong Jun Hong said wearing the crown would not add on to the pressure when competing in the 29th Kuala Lumpur 2017 Sea Games scale 2017 next month. The 27-year-old diver said every competition offers a new challenge that must be faced and should not take opponents lightly at any time. 
Jun Hong returned home to a rousing welcome from sports fans and top officials, including Youth and Sports Minister Khari Jamaluddin Abu Bakr at the Kuala Lumpur International Airport, Kerala, yesterday. Also present were the 27-year-old's family members, Father Chiong Sun Meng, Mother Liao Lai Kun and her sisters. Jun Hong, who was escorted by head coach Yang Juliang and the entire diving team, was also inducted into the Malaysian Book of Records during the event. Bagi saya paling penting adalah um, consistency in training, yeah. And the second one, bagi saya recovery. Last Wednesday, Jun Hung made history when she upset Rio Olympics gold and silver medalist CEI Jie and Rian Qian of China to become Malaysia's first diving winner at the World Championships in Budapest, Hungary. The grand welcoming home event at the KLIA Arrival Hall also welcomed para-athletics world champions short putter Ziad Zulkipli and long jumper Latif Romli as well as the national under-23 football team who had qualified for the AFC under-23 championship. Both Ziad Zokifli and Latif Romli, who won gold medals at the World Para-Athletics Championships in London, assured they will keep striving for greater heights. For Ziad, he looks forward to his next endeavour, the SEA Games. Ziad won his second world title in the men's F20 shot part while Latif successfully defended his T20 long jump gold. Rizwan Puzi, meanwhile, took home the silver in the men's 100m T36. Ziad and Latif will be making their debut in the SEA Games, a competition for able-bodied athletes, next month.